Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to update on the Waterbox 7225. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now it's been a little bit since I did a tank update, so I just want to go over a couple things that have been kind of happening and changing with the tank. So thankfully the crazy heat wave is over. However, these fans did do a fantastic job of keeping the tank down, keeping things a bit cooler. And I do have the two 120 mil Noctua fans in here. So that actually did a pretty good job. And I still do hear them kick on once in a while, but for overall the passive cooling of the fans, or I guess active cooling, but the fans definitely do make a big difference. Now coral wise, for the most part, everything's been doing really well. The rainbow looms really starting to take off um, against the wall there. It's super cool to see and crusting up the side. So I'm really stoked for once that actually starts putting up branches off the, wall, the overflow wall. I think it's going to be really cool. I've seen people do similar things with GSP, but with rainbow loom coming off, it's going to look awesome. Um, coming down here, there's a little bit of coral wear for going on. Um, I always forget the name of that guy. It's the one on the, on the Tropic Marine buckets, like Roboyas or something like that. Um, but that guy, it's starting to be a little more aggressive towards the Sunset Millie. You can see it starting to recede back from it. So a little bit of coral warfare going on as it kind of claims the space. But so far, well actually one thing that surprised me with this guy, is there's an MP60 right there. That guy can handle a lot of flow. And that's one of the main reasons I put him there. In front, we got this blue stag. And this guy is growing really well. Super cool bright colors. Beside it, uh, Deepwater Acro. This is a super cool piece. This is Reef Raft Tropicana. So a really cool one, lots of bright green, or lots of bright orange, and little tiny green polyps on it, so pretty cool. Uh, we also have the green goblin beside it, and this was growing a ball into it, so I did frag it back quite a bit just to give that some more space to grow. And same thing, if we look on the top, that's starting to grow in towards that guy, so it might be a little more fragging just to make sure nothing's gonna choke each other off. If we look back up here a little bit, this one still, is a bit of a mystery to me that is a little Walt Disney. It has not done much of anything. It's been encrusting out actually. So I had the little piece on the side and it's basically growing out a big lip out the side. So rather than really growing branches, it's doing some crazy plating that might be from the flow. I suspect maybe there's a lot of return flow and it's trying to like grow up and make a solid base over it. I'm not sure, but it is kind of fascinating. This guy's really cool. I have a little nub I got of golden rod. Super cool. It's like a goldy deep water acropora so really excited for that to grow because it's a very unique color but yeah overall things are growing and pretty happy inside the tank red dragon's gotten huge the last little while uh, a couple issues though this guy is the pink cadillac and you can see it's been dying off at the bottom of the branch so it's been slowly stning so i'm probably gonna have to frag off that little branch to the right there just before it gets it to it and i'll put it somewhere else uh, now the base is still growing pretty well, and the one beside it as well, the fruit splash. You can same thing, you can see a bit of STM, and I don't know why, and that does bug me a little bit. Everything else around it is growing, is thriving, is happy, so I don't know. So I kind of do wonder if it is a bacterial or something else. Now on that note, super cool thing, uh, a few weeks ago I had Aqua Biomics on my stream. And I did get a kit off them, so I'm going to do the microbiome test kit and a DNA test kit on the tank. So I'm super excited for that. It's going to be really cool to see kind of what diversity is in the tank, how things are going, and yeah, it'll be really just fascinating to see how it all kind of correlates together. Now, what you do with that data is a good question. I know they do give you some recommendations based off of it. So maybe once I get my test results back, maybe I'll see if I can get them on a stream and go through it live with them, which would be pretty cool. Now, do you, on the note of diversity, I did add, probably can't see it, but I had a bag of Miracle Mud and a bag of the Aqua Forest Mud. And I did add them both to, underneath my Kato. So there is definitely the Miracle and that mud, so that should hopefully add a bunch of bacteria diversity to the tank. And I actually did that right after I did the stream that night with the Aqua Biomics. So it should be kind of cool to see, not that I can compare with before, but it'll be kind of neat to see if there's a bunch more diversity added to my tank. Uh, a little while ago, I did end up losing my orange plate, which sucked. No idea why, this started to recede on me. And there's one right beside it, perfectly happy. So that's always a bit of a mystery. So I did put some of those little flower potty guys on top of it, should look kind of cool once it eventually grows over and encrusts it. Um, but otherwise, the rest of the corals in the tank are happy and thriving, minus my couple little problem childs. It's getting close to dinner time, so of course all the fish are following me around like little puppies. 
down for the calc reactor, I guess it just started mixing. So the DIY Alchemax one is still working quite well. Um, I just had a little bit of the calc plus two to it last night and just freshen it up. But this is doing a decent boost to pH, which is awesome, as well as is supplementing the tank a bit more. So super cool. So really happy with this DIY for, it was very inexpensive and it's helping boost up the pH, which is always a bonus. Now, while we're talking about pH, if we look on top of the skimmer, this little DIY scrubber, it, this is still going pretty strong. Uh, it's likely due for some media replacement. If I look inside, I can see a bit of a mix of purple in there. Now, whenever I empty the skimmer cup, I just gave it a shake to mix it up and kind of randomize it. So I'm not probably getting full potential out of it, but it's still helping a bit, which it all adds up. So it's always still a plus. Now, underneath in the sump, I do have all the eShops media. This was prior inside of my old media reactor, my crypto reactor, which might go back on the tank later, but I had to take out for now in order to fit all of this. So it is in the sump for now. On the refugium side of things, this thing is pretty solid, so definitely due for a fill. The little prime fuge is still doing a fabulous job, and it grows it like crazy. Now, we don't see this side of the tank quite as much just because it's a slight pain to get to it. But overall, I'd say the side is looking pretty happy as well. Um, this is one I got off a of buddy a while ago. I don't even know what it's called, but it is really bright goldy color. I'm starting to encrust and grow over the rocks. I think that's going to look pretty cool over time. Um, same with the Worldwide Corals, Grafton Monty. Just the red and green together looks pretty awesome. There's lots of stuff as I'm over here I can see is falling over, which needs a little bit of love. You know, like some of the Duncan, some stuff's got pushed up against the glass from fish. A little bit of cyano in here, so that might be something got to deal with, but overall things are growing pretty happy. And this guy, I don't know what this guy is, but he looks pretty awesome. The purple and green looks pretty stellar. If we jump up a little bit, we can see some of the Euphilia garden. I got a bunch of different hammers and bicolor frog spawn. Just different Euphilias, so I think I'm going to try and tuck these guys back up into the rock a little bit more, just to give them a little bit of a couple inches of space on the side. Uh, Rainbow clove polyps. These are really starting to grow between the acros and all over. Super cool little splash of color. So I'm kind of curious how they do over time. And I just put a couple on the bottom. They've actually grown up somehow on their own, so it's kind of cool. As long as the acros have a steady base, it'll look kind of neat between some of the cracks. And if we come up here, you can see way back when, remember that little rock flower that spawned in the tank? Yeah, little guy up there, super cool. Yellow and red, so a really pretty one. It's a bit of a shame he's so high up and kind of hard to see, but kind of like a little hidden gem of the tank. A little chunk of burning banana, we got a little orange satosa down there, and some branching cyphastria. I believe that guy's rolled by WWC Terra Red. This guy has been encrusting for ages. I'm hoping it starts to sprout up soon, but it's Hellfire Melly, really pretty colors on it. It's a very bright orange. Kind of get a really cool view of how the rain balloons and crusting up the side from the side. You can really see how much it's growing up. Now, when I already put it in, I put, did put a little nub of the rain balloon over here. And you can see it's really starting to grow into the Pac Man, which is kind of crazy. It's interesting to see how things kind of fuse or start to grow around each other. I do always find that little bit of the coral warfare kind of interesting. It almost looks like the rain balloon is growing over top of the Pac Man, which is kind of cool. Now on this rock, at one point the Cyphastria was dying back. So it was almost barren. There's little patches of it. Now it looks like actually a good chunk of this is growing back. Now when I did have the die off, I did also add on the Jason Fox Freak Care to the top of it. And super cool and I was hoping it crust it. But now it's going to be interesting. I'm really curious to see what happens with the Pavona versus the Cyphastria and kind of who wins that battle. But it'll be kind of cool if they do coexist on the same rock. But I guess time will tell them who wins that one. Now my Zoa rock, they're definitely taking over. I did have a little tiny piece of Marvin the Martian. You can kind of see him poking out of the cracks. But for the most part, he's being surrounded by Zoa, so hopefully he makes it. Fish-wise, Copper Band's still doing very well. Love this guy. Uh, now, since I've added him, I actually can't even find a single Aptasia. So I added him at first, and I did a big battle of Ep Aptasia, and that seemed to have worked very, very well because I can barely spot them. If I do, it's in some little tiny back crack somewhere. So he definitely does a good job of keeping all the main ones under control. Now I still do get some cyano in the tank randomly, like nothing on the main areas, but there are certain chunks kind of like back up there. We got some and some of the little cracks I can see it. So I have been using a little Neptune P-Mump just to blow it off every four or five days. 
and I don't, I gotta figure out what the actual source of that is. My nitrates have actually got down really low now, but the problem is I still have to deal with phosphates, so I do have to get onto that one. Now for that, speaking of phosphates, this actually was my last test this morning. So we are at 0 0.139, so 0.13. So that's definitely higher than I'd like. So I do need to 100% work on that. Um, I might try adding lanthium chloride to the doser or maybe step up my GFO. That's something I had aside, but I gotta, gotta figure out something to get under control. Um, so behind the controller board, we got the Elkatronic and my Elk's a little bit low, so I also gotta work on that. And we got the Mastertronic. Auto testers are definitely a wonderful thing because it's a nice, quick, easy way to just check on the status of everything. Um, now dosing wise, I got, do got the replenish for the trace, the restore, coral color, and shadow grow. And down below, I also have flatworm stop and coral booster, which the coral booster is empty. So I am out of that one. So these are kind of like my daily automated dosings and I am periodically doing ICP tests and manually dosing corrections with the reef moonshiner. So I'm doing a bit of a, a blend of a few different methods, but overall I'd say it's working pretty well because you know, minus those two or three corals, everything else is looking awesome and getting really great colors and growing well. Something else I'm gonna to add to the tank is I got to get the Polyp Lab Genesis Rock Booster and Apollo Lab did send this one to me. So thank you guys. Um, so I'm kind of cu super curious to check it out. Super, super dense little bricks. Now these have a ton of surface area. What's it say? Total surface area, 2160 meters square. So there is a ton of surface area, very, very porous. It's a very, very tough brick. So these actually could be cool to use for like skimmer stands or other things in your tank. So it could have a utility purpose as well as adding a lot of bacteria surface. Now it also does come with their genus bacteria. So concentrated mix of dormant bacteria strains. Uh, I don't know if it actually says what strains it is. But either way, I think I'm gonna add some of these together and it never hurts to have lots of bacteria surface in the tank. So the actual sampling process is actually pretty easy. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so we're gonna start, we got our little filter cup and we draw 60 mils of water from the top of the tank. Again, the most important part of all this is being super sterile. So we're just gonna take our 60 mils from the surface and we open our filter cup and put the end of the syringe on. Now this is probably gonna be the most time consuming part of this whole process because we need to very slowly, I think the instruction said about four or five mils per minute and just very slowly drip this through it. And basically what it's doing right now is any of the microbes are getting trapped in the filter where the water is dripping through it. And the big thing is if you go too fast, you're likely could pop the filter off and you'll make a mess and it won't be a proper sample. Now the next step is going to be to use the fixative and this is basically what kills off the bacteria but lets it preserve itself. So we're just going to pour that into the cap, suck up whatever's in there and run it through the filter. So we're finished, drop the whole thing into the whirl pack. And this guy's done. Now the other part of this is gonna be a film sample. So this is gonna be from off a surface. Now there's two types of bacteria. We got one type that lives in the water column and the other type that lives on surfaces. So you wanna swab somewhere, a dark place in your tank that has lots of flow. So in this case, we're gonna use the overflow pipes. Since it doesn't really get light inside of here, but it should have lots of good surface film. So it should be lots of good bacteria in here. I mean, once we have that, we do dip this in the fixative again, just to make sure that we preserve any of the bacteria. So quick dip in the fixative and back into the test tube. So we got our bacteria test done. Now we're also gonna do a DNA test. Now this will tell us if there's any kind of fish diseases or any kind of funky stuff happening in our tank. So we'll test for parasites and common fish diseases. And it's actually a very similar process to what we did, except this time we're gonna run three different syringes full of water through our filter. Now this one definitely flows a lot quicker than the other one did, so it's probably a different different paper inside of it to collect all the DNA. Now just like before, we're gonna use our fixative just to freeze the sample in time more or less. And when we're done, it goes into the whirl pack. Super easy process, we got our sterile sample. So the sample process was actually super easy. I mean, it took a little bit of time to run the stuff through the filter, but very easy process. 
So I am super excited to see what comes back. So shout out to Aquabiomics and yeah, it'll be really cool to hopefully get them on the stream and analyze it live and go through all the results and see what the heck's in it might take. So super cool. I think it's gonna be a really cool kind of future of the hobby and all kinds of crazy stuff we're gonna learn as this technology develops more and more. So now I'm gonna go get these samples in the mail. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next update.